Anthony Samroff from BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com and I'm here to tell you about the secret purpose of so-called pointless small talk. I know I've certainly called it that before. Um, making small talk isn't a skill that came naturally to me, but I've improved at it and I've found that it's helped me feel less anxious and awkward in social situations, connect with people better, and actually enjoy myself a lot more. So I've run a series of events here in Glasgow, Scotland to help people improve their confidence and their communication skills. And I wanna share with you some of what we've learned from practicing exercises and improving our social skills, because many of us, especially those of us with a little bit of brains between the ears, have been known to say things like, ah, I hate small talk, you know, it's so superficial and shallow, and people talk about meaningless things when they first meet and it's just awkward and I can't get into it. I just, you know, can't see the point in talking about uh, the weather or Ariana Grande's new album. And I think a lot of the difficulty comes from a confusion over what the actual purpose of the communication is. I mean, could it be that when someone comments on the weather, they aren't actually asking your views on the weather. I mean, here's a thought, here's a more shocking thought. Um, what if when someone asks you, so um, what do you do? They're not actually as interested in the specific details of what it is you do as they are in seeing if they can maybe create some kind of sense of connection with you and uh, maybe at least a little bit of comfort and familiarity and um, all of us being to some degree a lot um, well to varying degrees socially awkward and not quite sure of our place in the social situation so are you starting to guess what the secret purpose of pointless small talk is if you are please do me a favor and don't keep it a secret but press the share button so that more people can benefit from the video. So it, it might seem like people want to chit chat to exchange information with you, but that's just the cover. Actually, what they're doing is inviting you to become a partner with them and creating a bit of excitement. And um, it's honest and it's well intentioned most of the time. And um, it's just part of the primal attempt to um, build connection and um, a, a bit of comfort so that we feel at home rather than awkward. And very few people are actually out to trap you. Um, and they're not trying to make you awkward. The chances are they're just feeling about as self-conscious as you are. So that means that if you actually become better at running with it and making something happen, my God, will people thank you for it. And so this is a first, the first in a series of videos that I wanna do to help in a really practical way, break it down. And um, I'm gonna include exercises that you can actually take out and use in conversations, in real life conversations, without looking up like a complete weirdo. Uh, they're not weirdo making looking like exercises. They're, they're things that you can actually use as waypoints in your head to say, oh yeah, I can try that out right now. And then you can watch what happens and go, oh, I learned something from that. I'll be better at doing that next time. So. That is the, that's going to be the purpose of this series of videos and I hope that you'll stay tuned. If I get lots of shares, that will allow me to know that what I'm doing actually has a purpose in the world, so please do um, hit the share button. Um, as biological organisms, believe it or not, we are these animals. Uh, we've got a whole extra part to our brain above what most mammals have, but um, you know, essentially our Human nature is built on our animal nature. And we wanna know how secure we are in our environment and how much of us it's okay to express. For the majority of people, small talk is more like testing the waters. If this low risk conversation goes smoothly about, you know, God forbid the weather, then maybe we can progress to something a bit more in depth if we feel comfortable around each other. If someone treats me like I'm familiar with them, then it's safe for me to act a bit more familiar with them. But if they're very proper and polite, then I better be more proper and polite too. 
um, if someone's cheeky with me, then that's good. Then I can be banter with them a bit and let my cheeky side out to play. I know one of the things that I've learned from improving these skills is, well, I've just got quite a cheeky and bantery sense of humor anyway, but it would only really come out around people that I really knew well. But the more that I've improved my own social skills, the more I'm just like that around people when I first met them. And people really love it. They respond to it really well because because I'm being a bit cheeky, that means that they feel like they've got permission to do that too. Wouldn't it be so great if you could be more like you are around the people that you know really well, around people when you first meet them, you give them permission to be more familiar with you. So once you know the secret, the secret purpose, then you can actually start to craft these conversations into something that you enjoy more. And as you realize that people are looking to you for social cues, um, just as much as you're looking to them for social cues, then you become an originator, you kind of become a leader in their interactions. So just remember, it's not the conversation that's going on on the surface that counts, it's more of a sense of the feeling that people receive from you. And um, you know, we want to find out where we fit in the social order and make sure that it's a comfortable place for us. So um, our initial conversation is just a means for, for feeling each other out and figuring it out. So, um, you can think of small talk as pointless and, uh, and try, or you can think of it as an invitation. You know, someone someone's asking you to create an experience of them, to play a little game with you, and we can make up the rules of the game as we go along. So once you decide you're playing, it's going to become a lot more fun. I hope you're going to come along and play with me because, right, no skill-based activity is much fun when you don't feel like you're any good at it, but it will take on a new dimension once you kind of feel like you know what you're doing. If you've ever played an instrument or tried to play chess, you grab the guitar, your fingers feel too sore to play. But if you keep at it, you can start making music. And if you get good, you can play with other people. So I hope you're going to join me on the journey so we can all improve together. And if you think you could really benefit from having more high quality connection in your life, then you should join with me and some other people um, in my new social skills mentoring program. We're going to get together once a week and try some exercises internationally over Skype and you'll have peer work so you can help each other. You can and meet with your buddies uh, during the week to practice exercises and learn more. If that sounds like something that would really benefit you, send me a message on Facebook or email me at anthony at beyourselfandloveit.com. And until next time, be yourself. Well, don't just be yourself, be yourself and love it.